doing trend line trending down. Yeah. Bam, comes along September and you jump up 100,000 more than they estimated. That just broke that trend line. You can no longer say that the trend on lost jobs is downward now. Take the cash for comfort. Take the trend line on automobile sales. We were pumping along there January through July through June at an annual sales pace of like 9.2, 9.3 million cars. And then, bam, they do cash for conquers. The sales jumped up in July and August. So, oh, we've broken the trend line downward. Now we have a trend line up. So they all were projecting that maybe automobile sales are going to recover. Wham, comes along September. It crashes. You know what this is like? This is like trying to start a lawnmower engine. It'll only run with the choke on. When you pull the choke off, it dies. And the same thing has happened in the housing market. They were all saying, look, the housing market is stabilized and it's bottoming out. Well, it was bottoming out with the $8,000 credit for new home buyers. And, you know, it takes anywhere from, from 45 to 60 days to close a home, okay? Once you, once you sign the sales contract. And so the stimulus is running out next month, but it basically killed new home and existing home sales last Mike, month. Mike, when we come back, I want to ask you about the commercial real estate bubble, okay? Okay. All right, sir. This is Texas. So the unfortunate, um, ungilded truth is, if you look at the trend lines, we're not seeing what we think we ought to be seeing, and there may be a variety of reasons for this. Mike, you have from time to time spoken of the commercial real estate bubble, uh, and you said that it was it was ipso facto that if there was a um, a domestic real estate bubble regarding people's private homes because of subprime mortgaging, that there had to be a commercial real estate bubble too. What's uh, what's your observed status on uh, that particular situation? Well, uh, let me explain as simply as I can. Uh, house mortgages, when they go into fault, they go into fault unpredictable. It's whenever somebody loses their job or they go you know, behind more than two months. You can you can go behind two months on your house mortgage and then keep on making your payments and they won't foreclose on you, okay? Okay. Although you're behind two months. All of the commercial real estate loans are built on more like five year horizons. In other words, they sign a contract for five years and and it's short term. It's not a thirty year or fifteen or twenty year mortgage. It's a five-year mortgage, and so what happens is, on the commercial collapse, they don't collapse until they have to refinance that five-year commercial loan that they've got. Well, as long as they make the payments on it, there's no problem, but when they come up to refinance that commercial mortgage they have on their shopping center or their mall or their office building, if the vacancy rate has increased to a point where the projected revenue stream from rentals will not support the value of the building or the mall or the shopping center, and you owe more money on that shopping center than what the current valuation is, you either have to come up with new capital and reduce your loan, whatever loan you're going to to roll, at, you know, to get the loan amount down to the value of the uh, commercial real estate, and generally that's got to be 80% of the fair market value. Well, Mike, there must be a whole bunch of commercial real estate out there that's in dire Underwater. straits, and and the banks the banks aren't touching it. Why? Right. Well, a lot of these banks are keeping them afloat. A lot of these banks are it's what's called rolling the, the, the mortgage loan. They're rolling it to keep from recognizing the losses. If you go to what Greenspan said this week, he was all over the board. Number one, he said that President Obama's uh, Tar uh, Protectionist Act was very dangerous. He used the word dangerous. He didn't say it was just a mistake. He said it was dangerous. He said we don't need another stimulus plan because he's having problems seeing how Bernanke's going to unwind the stimulus he's already done, much less add another stimulus package on top of what we've got because he's afraid it would create uh, hyperinflation two or three years down the road, which I happen to disagree with that, and I happen to disagree with what he's saying about protectionism because... I was gonna, well, I was going to bring that up because you've, you've said many times that 
given the fact, and then this is what one of the two or three of the main things you've always said, you said that nothing the government could do 